we are given a rational function and have to determine the y-intercept, x-intercepts, vertical asymptotes, and horizontal asymptote. To determine some of these, we will want the rational function in factored form, and therefore let's begin by factoring the numerator and denominator. Looking at the numerator, notice how the only common factor among all three terms is one, and therefore if it does factor, it will factor into two binomial factors. Because the first term is three x squared, which is equal to three x times x, we have a three x and an x in the first positions of the binomial factors. And then because the leading coefficient is not one, it's three, we now place the factors of negative two in the second positions so that the sum of the inner product and outer product is equal to the middle term of positive five x. Let's use the factors of positive two and negative one and let's try placing the plus two with the x and the minus one with the three x. Notice now the inner product is negative one x or negative x plus the outer product is six x which does give us positive five x the middle term. This is now factored correctly. Now looking at the denominator, the only common factor among all three terms is one. If it does factor, it will factor into two binomial factors. First term is three x squared. Let's place a three x here and an x here. Because a is not one, we place the factors of positive 12 in the second positions so that the sum of the inner product and outer product is equal to positive 13 x. Let's use the factors of four and three we know we wouldn't have a three in this binomial factor because if we did, there'd be a common factor of three. There will never be a common factor in a binomial if there wasn't a common factor in the original trinomial. So let's try placing the plus four here and the plus three here. Now let's check. The inner product is four x plus the outer product is nine x, which does equal positive 13 x. So now we have the rational function in factored form. Number one, we're asked to find the y-intercept of the rational function. To find the y-intercept of any function, we set x equal to zero and determine the corresponding y-value or function value. If we set x equal to zero, to find the y-intercept, we need to find the function value f of zero. And we can use the original form or the factored form. For the y-intercept, let's use the original form. If we substitute zero for x, we have three times zero squared plus five times zero minus two in the numerator. And the denominator is three times zero squared plus 13 times zero plus 12. Simplifying, notice how we have negative two over 12, which is equal to negative one sixth. So the y-intercept is negative one sixth, but it is a point which we should give as an ordered pair and the ordered pair is zero comma negative one sixth. Now let's find the x-intercepts. To find the x-intercepts, we set y or f of x equal to zero. And to find the x-intercepts, let's use the factored form of the rational function. So for number two, if we set f of x equal to zero, we have the equation zero equals, in factored form, the quantity three x minus one times the quantity x plus two all over the quantity three x plus four times the quantity x plus three. It is important to notice nothing simplifies here because there are no common factors between the numerator and denominator. And if we think about this, a fraction is only equal to zero when the numerator is equal to zero. And therefore to solve this equation, we only set the numerator equal to zero. So we need to solve the equation the quantity three x minus one times the quantity x plus two equals zero to find the x-intercepts. Well, this product is equal to zero when three x minus one is equal to zero or when x plus two is equal to zero. Solving for x here, we add one and divide by three, x equals one third. Here we subtract two on both sides and get x equals negative two. Again, these are points on the graph and therefore we should give them as ordered pairs if the x-intercept is one-third, the ordered pair is one-third comma zero. And if the x-intercept is negative two, the ordered pair is negative two comma zero. So we enter the ordered pairs for number two separated by a comma.
Next we're asked to find the vertical asymptotes. X equals A is a vertical asymptote if A is a zero of the denominator and not the numerator. So again, let's use the factored form of the function to determine the vertical asymptotes. So beginning with the function, we are looking for the zeros of the denominator that are not zeros of the numerator. Because there are no common factors between the numerator and denominator, we just need to find the zeros of the denominator, which is when this product here is equal to zero. So we need to solve the equation, the quantity three x plus four times the quantity x plus three equals zero to find the equations of the vertical asymptotes. Well, this product is equal to zero when three x plus four equals zero or when x plus three equals zero. Solving for x here, we subtract four and divide by three, which gives us x equals negative four thirds. Solving for x here, we subtract three on both sides, giving us x equals negative three. Remember, vertical asymptotes are vertical lines. Vertical lines are always in the form of x equals a constant, and therefore the vertical asymptotes are x equals negative four thirds and x equals negative three, but here they want us to separate the two values with a comma. And then for number four, we're asked to find the horizontal asymptote of the rational function. Y equals b is a horizontal asymptote if f of x approaches b as x approaches positive or negative infinity. To help us determine the horizontal asymptote, we will go back to the original form of the rational function. There's a shortcut to determine the equation of the horizontal asymptote by looking at the degree of the numerator and denominator. When the degrees are the same like we have here, both degrees are two, the horizontal asymptote is equal to the ratio of the leading coefficients, which in this case would be y equals three divided by three, which is equal to one. y equals one is the horizontal asymptote. If the higher degree is in the denominator, as x approaches infinity, the denominator grows faster and the function value approaches zero. If the higher degree is in the numerator, as x approaches infinity, the function value increases without bound and there is no horizontal asymptote. Another way to determine the horizontal asymptote is to look at a table of values. So let's also do that. I've already entered the rational function here, and now I'm going to press second window for the table set, and I'm going to change the independent variable to ask, press enter, and now I go to the table, second graph. I'm gonna start typing in larger and larger x values, simulating approaching infinity. So let's say x equals 10, and now x equals 100, x equals 1,000. And you can probably see very quickly that the y value or function value is approaching one, verifying the horizontal asymptote is y equals one. Before we go, let's verify all this information graphically. Notice the vertical or y-intercept is zero comma negative one-sixth. The horizontal intercepts or x-intercepts are negative two comma zero and one-third comma zero. The vertical asymptotes are x equals negative three and x equals negative four thirds. And the horizontal asymptote is y equals one. I hope you found this helpful.